Hello and welcome to the Chemistry Admissions Talk, part of Imperial 360 Live Virtual Open Day event. Welcome to the Department of Chemistry. My name is Dr. Simon Gerrard. I'm a Senior Teaching Fellow in Organic and Medicinal Chemistry and I'm also the Undergraduate Admissions Tutor. And today I'd like to talk you through the degree programme structure, how to apply and give you a hint at a variety of different things that you could look forward to um, studying chemistry with us. So today I want to talk to you about our chemistry degrees, their structure and the application process as well and entry requirements. I want to talk to you about our curriculum redesign process that we've been going through really excitedly. Um, talk to you about other study opportunities as well and other things you can do to really enrich your experience at university. Student support, which is particularly important to us. And just what does an admissions tutor look for in an application? So I'm going to give you a, a sort of personal guide to that at the end of this talk. Firstly, I'd like to talk to you about the degree programmes we have on offer. We have a three year BSc programme in chemistry. Many institutions offer one of these and this gives a core first and second year programme with a final year which gives you optional choices in different lecture courses and a research project as well. We have a number of different four year courses. Um, these range from our four year chemistry MSci degree programme, has the same first and second year core as the three year BSc. Um, with a fourth year re significant research project. There are a whole variety of other options as well, so you can do a chemistry degree with other subjects and other opportunities as well. So two of our options, which are very popular with our students, are chemistry with medicinal chemistry, of which I'm one or two coordinators, and chemistry with molecular physics as well. So these allow you to really combine interests in biology and physics alongside chemistry as ancillary, uh, sort of ancillary or, or minor components alongside. There are other options as well. You might wish to do chemistry with management. And this is organised in a slightly different way to our other degree programmes uh, in which you would do a chemistry BSc. And at the end of your chemistry BSc, you would then move to the Imperial College Business School to study for your final year, um, looking at in modules such as management, uh, finance, business and uh, business organisation and accounting. And you'd have individual work and group coursework as part of that, too. The uh, chemistry with management degree, like all of our degree programmes, are accredited by the Royal Society of Chemistry. Uh, but this particular degree programme is also triple accredited um, by accounting related bodies uh, due to the management year with the business school. You might wish to use your language skills um, to study with chemistry with language abroad. Um, this is available to students in France, Germany, Switzerland and Spain with our partner institutions. You'd spend a year um, out there doing your research project and studying there. Um, we also have uh, partner institutions in English speaking countries as well for students on the Chemistry Research Abroad program, which also include the Netherlands, Singapore, I believe Australia and um, America. We also have rather a special program called Chemistry with a Language for Science. And this involves either French, German or Spanish at a higher level than the Chemistry with Research Abroad program, typically require at least a B at AS level or A level preferably. And this like, gives students um, really thorough training in language throughout the degree, as our research abroad program does, but to a higher level, such that students can spend their final year out at one of our partner institutions in France, Germany, Spain or Switzerland. And this has a higher weighting for the sort of humanities and language related part of the coursework. A number of these are also available with a year in industry. And at Imperial College, our year in industry is an additional year, a sandwich year between years three and four of your degree. This year is non-credit bearing in terms of credit points, but it's a really fantastic opportunity to get yourself industrial experience. We have a really wide range of collaborations with different members of staff with industries. Being based in London is a particular um, benefit in this respect. So many institutions offer a year industry as part of an integrated four year program where you would often be doing distance learning during your um, industrial year. Um, for our students, uh, there will be no additional distance learning and assessment while you're off on placement and you come back for your final year in the department and research project. I'd now like to move on to talk to you about entry requirements. And of course, this is something that students are very interested in. Um, 
Our typical entry requirements for students studying at A-level are A star AA to A star A star A. And we, this will include chemistry and maths. Maths is a prerequisite subject alongside chemistry. Um, for students studying A-level, we'll also require a third subject as well. And this subject would typically prefer to be physics, biology or economics, because we believe that these give a broader scientific base um, in terms of students training and preparation for the course. However, we will consider applications for students who have other third subjects, such as further maths or maybe a relevant language if you're wanting to study chemistry with a language of science. But, you know, also subjects like business studies, various humanities, modern languages, computer science, psychology. We will take all of this into account. We don't simply look at um, predicted grades and the combination of subjects, although they are important. We also look at the reference, personal statement and a whole range of other factors as well to get a really thorough and comprehensive overview to enable us to make uh, really accurate, accurate and um, valid decisions in our application process. For those students studying uh, the IB, it's 39 points, including chemistry and maths. And as you can see here, it's a particularly competitive application process, as you might imagine. We have over a thousand applications each year for just 160 places. And we go through, therefore, a shortlisting process with our applications. We will look at, as I, meant, look at, as I mentioned, the entire application. We read every single personal statement and reference. And for after this shortlisting process, we, we typically um, shortlist up to 75% of our applicants for interview. We would invite you to an interview. Um, all UK and EU students currently um, come and visit us for an interview as part of an interview day during the year. And we offer Skype interviews to overseas students as well. But they're welcome to visit if they wish. In terms of the application itself, I'll give you a more detailed uh, discussion of the personal statement at the end, but we really want to see an honest and constructive representation of you as the applicant. The interview process itself will, in person will be with two interviewers, two members of academic staff, and they're looking to see not just your scientific curiosity, your motivations, where your passion for chemistry lies, but they'll be asking you chemistry related questions. The personal statement is always a good place to start. And they'll be looking to see not just uh, sort of fundamental knowledge, but how you use that and how you can apply your knowledge and problem solve as well. So that's a, a key part of the interview. And the interview feedback itself is used alongside the application itself in our offer making decision process and a primary role, one of my primary roles is involved in that process. We also have a minimum English language requirement uh, for all of our degree programs. And that's a college requirement for a grade six or um, B at um, IGCSE or GCSE English, English language. There are a whole range of different entry requirements for different English language qualifications we can accept and you can find those on the website. So if you have any questions, do please contact us. As part of the um, entry requirement process as well, um, I will say that for students who are interested in chemistry and molecular physics, we do require physics as your third subject if you wish to study this. And for students who wish to study chemistry with medicinal chemistry, um, biology is a preference. It's not a requirement. We structure the course accordingly to support students who don't have biology background. But um, if you do, then this, uh, it will certainly be beneficial to you as part of the course. I want to move on now to uh, something we've been very excited about and busily still working hard on our curriculum review process. And this is a college wide review of all undergraduate degree programs undergoing a complete redesign and review. This is part of the new learning and teaching strategy brought in by Professor Simone Butendijk, um, who is the Vice Provost for Education for the college. And the aim is really to reshape the curriculum and to help students in their training to really develop the att attributes that are desired by employers uh, worldwide and for jobs that currently exist and jobs that don't exist yet. So this is really future proofing our curriculum and within in chemistry, this is led by Dr. Laura Patel, who's a principal teaching fellow. And she leads our team of team teaching fellows and others in developing, redeveloping our curriculum. And so we're ex we excitedly ran the redeveloped first year this year. That's finished and the new second year starts next year. And I want to talk to you about um, what, what was the reasoning behind this and what it involves. 
So what we wanted to do was to adjust the curriculum such that we give students more time to develop their problem solving skills, really valued by employers, and give time for reflection on their skills development. And part of this um, process was to re reduce the content very slightly because you don't need to know every single reaction, for instance, that ever occurred, but you need time to develop your problem solving skills. And with that, you can apply your knowledge to work out, for instance, how those reactions might occur. And so this is to try and open up the timetable very slightly to give students that skills development opportunities. We want to teach synoptically as well. So chemistry is an interdisciplinary subject. I and mean, it's not just organic, inorganic and physical chemistry. Um, we're not teaching them anymore in that way. We're in fact, we're teaching them in an interdisciplinary way. So we're trying to teach topics and help students to see the links between those topics. So you can help apply your knowledge from one concept into another. We want to make the assessment more authentic as well. So this is, means more tailored to a particular module the particular topic and the particular learning outcomes from that. And so we want to try and tailor that towards the skills development as well. So closed book exams, of course, everyone loves, um, not really, but uh, these are still a valued method of assessment, but we make wide use and wider use now of open book exams where you can bring your notes in, um, viva examinations where you have a discussion with a member of staff about a particular topic or practical, for instance, um, things such as um, presentations that you can do, um, group presentations or individual presentations. It could be a literature project, it could be review, you might produce a poster based on your research. Assessment is really varied, and so we're choosing the assessment far more sort of tailored and directed for the particular work. We want to try and bring in far more interactive and innovative teaching methods um, and try and build in really one of the most important parts of this is a sense of community and a staff student educational partnership. This really learning partnership is all about um, building that relationship between staff and students, building a stronger community, but also enabling us to help develop the curriculum and students to be a key part of informing that process as well. It's a two way conversation, and that's really what we are, are focused as a big focus of this whole process. And in terms of community, building students, building our research community and, and undergraduate students are a key part of that, too. Um, we have our research base now at our White City campus at the Molecular Sciences Research Hub, which you can hear about more um, in the live session online. And we're going to have a full walk, full version of our walkthrough video of the uh, Molecular Sciences Research Hub building available to view online this summer. So I want to talk to you now about some of the teaching methods as part of this process. This process has been informed by students, current students, ex-students, industry, staff, and a whole variety of research. What could you expect studying chemistry with us? Well, you have lectures. So lectures are a valid and valued and important method of sort of teaching and teaching delivery, but they're not just as monotonal um, didactic delivery uh, that might bore you in a Monday morning. This is very much an interactive process. So we're building more and more active learning into these exercises, breakout sessions, answering questions on your phone, for instance, on Mentimeter or Kahoot and other thing, other uh, such a questioner, exam questioner software online. Um, but this is really a great opportunity to um, assess how students are doing in real time to get real time feedback. And we video capture all our lectures as well. And so you can students can watch this afterwards for revision purposes. And also if they weren't able to make the lecture, for instance. Lab work is a key part of our curriculum and our first year students have nine to 12 hours in a lab week of lab work. And uh, not all weeks are lab weeks. And so when you don't have a lab week, you have this nine to 12 hours of time for you to work on your coursework, to work, go through revision questions, to um, revise, to revise your lectures and watch recordings. Um, really time for you as well to get that work-life balance because um, study, uh, life outside your studies is very important too. Um, but the lab work itself covers three areas. We look at synthetic chemistry. We have measurement science. And what you can see here is a Lego spectrometer. One of the very first practical students do is make their own spectrometer out of Lego and it does work. 
um, and also computational chemistry and programming. So we do teach students how to use Python as part of their labs. And a lot of students actually love this and use this for all their data analysis afterwards. Small group teaching, though, is also very important to us. And we have small group tutorials of about um, six to eight students with a member of staff. Um, and students will have uh, six tut tutors, academic tutors during the year. And they'll have regular tutorials every other week. That's our current plan. Um, and this, the idea behind this is to help students in applying their knowledge and practicing their problem solving skills in a really sort of nice, small, close knit and friendly community environment. We also make use of larger workshops. This is more classroom like activity that you may be used to. Typically about 30 students with the member of staff who's lecturing that particular course and also sometimes their postgraduate support as well. And this is a chance uh, for you to practice questions, um, the questions that are similar in style to assessments as well, but a chance for you to really practice and um, cement your knowledge and understanding and application of that knowledge to in key concepts from the course. And this is a good chance to work with your friends as well um, in, in building that uh, core knowledge and understanding. We have a wide use of online learning tools. We, if we have used Blackboard virtual learning environment for many years. It's more than just a repository of information. It houses all our recorded lectures. We have slight uh, lecture notes present on there, revision questions, practice questions, um, videos for other resources. It has web links that you can see, links to our reading lists as well. And so this is really more than just a repository. It's an interactive learning resource. And really through um, current challenges we've been facing in this world, we've managed a really successful um, transition to online um, teaching delivery this uh, last term. And that's been working really very well. Online teaching can only develop in better and better ways. The research project as well is a really valid and key part of the program and students will undergo their research project um, in a, within a research group in their final year. And uh, most of our large majority of our research groups are based out of our new molecular sciences research hub on our White City campus. So I'd like to talk to you now about the degree program structure. So in year one, like in year two as well, we have the same course structure across all of our degree programs. And that actually allows students to transfer between degree programs if they feel that a different degree program is the better option for them. This really does allow students to sort of change their mind as their interests may develop and change over time. And we have two transfer windows during the year, just like the Premier League, where students can transfer between degree programmes and we give advice about which transfers we're able to, able to do uh, based on what the students have been studying so far. And the idea behind this core programme is to build a really solid interdisciplinary foundation. And as I mentioned, we're not teaching inorganic, organic and physical chemistry anymore in that way. We're teaching in, a, in, 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 in an interdisciplinary way. And so um, first thing I'd like to talk to you about the practical chemistry. And the practical chemistry starts uh, really with a sort of practical skills training. We have students who arrive with a whole variety of different practical skills. And so we want to help students in the laboratory environment. And one of the first practical students will do is actually our chemical kitchen. And so um, this is where students can learn um, safe laboratory skills. Um, so thinking of things such as um, following suitable health and safety guidelines, um, following a method and procedure accurately, um, reproducibly um, to a high level of quality and accuracy as working well as part of a team. Um, these are all laboratory skills, but you do this within a kitchen within our chemistry department. And so this is part of the chemical kitchen. You can look that up on Twitter and Instagram, I believe, and see some of the um, dishes that the students have made. But this is a really nice uh, way to, for students to learn laboratory skills within an unthreatening environment. OK, so a familiar environment of a kitchen. We uh, have a number of different lab uh, modules that support our practical chemistry and the practical chemistry is not just kitchen chemistry we move students on through practical lab training skills in things such as recrystallization and uh, setting up reactions and purification and the practical chemistry then moves on to something called chemtrack and chemtrack is essentially like a skills portfolio the students uh, develop their investigative practical work and practical skills 
So it involves group work, it involves um, experimental design, and students will be looking at thing, looking at four themes as part of this. They are measure it, make it, prove it, and hack it. So students will be doing synthesis labs, measurement labs, computational labs, and other labs to prove hypotheses, but also hacking. So we have the advanced hack space up at, an, up at our White City campus where students can do prototyping in a whole range of areas. And I'll talk a bit more about the ad advanced hack space later. But ChemTrack moves throughout from about year term three and year one and all the way through year two as well. We have a number of first year modules. So these are looking at spectroscopy. So we're looking at things like mass spectrometry, NMR, IR, UV vis spectroscopy, the theory behind, but also application of that. Structure and bonding uh, looks at structure and bonding in molecules. So we're looking at things such as description of wave functions, uh, mathematical description of that as well. We're looking at quantum mechanics and the application of that to monoatomics, diatomics and larger molecules. This module, Language of Chemistry, um, really is looking at how can you best represent chemistry. So thinking about it mathematically, um, which ties into our structure and bonding module, but also thinking about it chemically. How can you represent uh, molecules, for instance, on a, on a piece of paper? Or how can you represent uh, organic reaction mechanisms, curly arrow mechanisms? How can you represent um, reactions and their um, energy pathways? So really, this is thinking about a representation of chemistry and the language of chemistry, ultimately. And this is a mostly coursework assessed, in fact, and our range of modules varies in terms of um, a mixture of different types of coursework and exam. In the second term, these are um, modules we're looking at uh, reactivity and chemistry of carbon centres. Um, in the reactivity carbon centers. In chemistry with elements, it's pretty much everything to do with elements that are not carbon. And the reaction toolkit is really using the tools of thermodynamics and kinetics to help you understand um, chemical reactions and at play. In the final term, term three is really where the practical work expands through ChemTrack. And students will have a, a series of extension topics. These are lectures given by um, academic staff within a department showing things about the application of the chemistry they've been learning, but also the history of chemical developments. Alongside this core programme, students will study an ancillary module or an optional module. Um, this could be medicinal chemistry, could be maths and physics for chemists, for which normally we students would need to have studied physics beforehand. Or it could be a language, for instance, or one of a whole number of other other modules offered through the Horizons Department of the college. For those students who are studying chemistry with a language for science, chemistry with medicinal chemistry, or chemistry with molecular physics, um, or chemistry research abroad, for instance, this uh, ancillary module would actually be a core part of your programme. So let's move into year two. So very, very similar. Again, the same core structure across our degrees, allowing you to transfer between degree programs. We even have some transfers possible in year three. Only year two is really looking at developing on from year one, developing that interdisciplinary foundation into a problem solving and application skills. So practical chemistry continues with ChemTrack, which I've talked about. And this is our current proposed structure. We have an analysis module which spans um, the first two and a half terms, looking at separation techniques and in more detail about how to use mass spectrometry, how to use um, other analysis techniques such as X-ray crystallography um, in analysis. Electronic states and bonding ties into the structure and bonding module in year one, but it also links into um, uh, photochemistry and spectroscopy as well, and the th underlying theory behind. Molecular synthesis is all about synthetic chemistry. There's a particular focus on selectivity here in this particular module, but we're looking at synthesis of organic and inorganic compounds as well. We then we have a series of modules starting in term two. The chemistry of molecular systems is looking at typically organometallic compounds. They're using catalysis, but also in uh, other processes in their structure. Solids, liquids and interfaces is looking at the structures of solids, the structures of liquids, their interactions. It looks at electrochemistry and also interfacial catalysis. So catalysis that occurs on surfaces. Macromolecules and materials is looking at polymers. So we're looking at things such as carbohydrates, 
um, synthetic polymers and DNA, for instance, so biomolecules as well. Alongside this, you have your ancillary module, or if you're taking one of the chemistry with degree programs, the module that corresponds to your second subject. And this ancillary module in, term, in year two could be medicinal chemistry two, maths and physics for chemists two, it could be a continuation of your language, or one of a whole range of horizons modules too. But in addition, in year two, students have options to choose modules from the business school. And we also run the undergraduate ambassador scheme, where we send a few students out each year into local schools to get teaching experience and uh, develop their teaching portfolio as part of their coursework. Like in year one as well, we have a series of extension topics. So just in the same vein, a series of lecture students can choose to watch based on history of chemical development and application of the uh, subjects that they've been learning and topics they've been learning during year two. So in years three and year four slash five, depending on which degree that you choose, this is really where the degree programs diversify, where you can specialize and really choose your path through based on how your interests are developed over time. The modules and the actual degree programs become more tailored towards a second subject. So if you are taking, for instance, chemistry or medicinal chemistry, this is where the um, lab work, for instance, would become more tailored towards medicinal chemistry with um, 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 company related and directed um, labs, for instance. In chemistry and molecular physics, you'll have lab work, which is more tailored towards uh, that interface between chemistry and physics and computer programming as well. And with languages, you have um, coursework more tailored towards your language as well. We have advanced elective chemistry modules. Students can choose a range of, a range of lecture courses um, as part of each of their advanced modules. And um, this really gives you flexibility to explore a wide range of options as well. We have a new, we'll have a new module called Industry 4.0, and this is really looking at um, what are the latest developments in industry. So we're looking at things like artificial intelligence, um, big data, robotics. Where is really industry going? What is the latest? What's the current up-to-date state? Of Students will have their research project or advanced lab work, depending on the particular degree that they're doing and the year they're in. And some of the degree programs will also have business school and horizons options available to them as well. There are, of course, then the year opportunities, the year in industry, which is a sandwich course that I mentioned about. The research abroad program, where you spend your uh, t your final year um, in a institution abroad doing your research project um, in both English speaking or non English speaking countries. Or the study abroad program with a greater weighting on the language aspect of the course and um, where you take spend your final year in France, Germany, Switzerland or Spain in one of our partner institutions. But it's not just the chemistry degree itself. There are lots of other opportunities you can do to really enrich your experience. Um, and one of those, as I've mentioned, is Horizons. And Horizons is a department which supports all the degree programmes at the college. And they offer nine different languages, including British Sign Language as optional modules for students. But they also support the Language of Science programme, which provides a training in that particular language throughout the degree. The business school offer modules as well as and the horizons um, also provide modules in things in humanities, in global challenges, in things such as creative writing, history of science, ethics. And um, really, it's a fantastic opportunity to uh, work with students from other departments as well and help to apply, <coughs> help to apply your knowledge and develop your skills. We also have the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program at the college and the Department of Chemistry hosts, hosts many students each summer um, in these uh, research projects over the summer. And this is a fantastic opportunity to really get a chance to see what it might be like in a particular research group, explore a particular research area you might be interested in. That occurs for also eight to ten weeks over the summer. We also have the international version of this and the international version of this is for students at the end of year three. Um, and this, this is with the partner institutions of ours. But it's not just 
um, summer work experience or even Easter work experience that students can have. Um, outreach events, particularly important to me also as outreach coordinator, um, such as the Imperial Fringe Festival, which is a science and engineering festival that you can come and visit. Um, but there are also other competitions, for instance, such as the Faculty of Natural Sciences Make a Difference competition, uh, where students um, get together in teams from across our faculty, chemistry, life sciences, maths and physics, and uh, compete in a competition for eight weeks over the summer for a £6,000 prize. And um, we've been very lucky within chemistry uh, in 2017, Matoha, uh, which you can see pictured here, and in 2018, Clean Sea, um, had students from chemistry and they won the prize for uh, um, their uh, efforts in developing IR based equipment for efficient plastic waste sorting and um, way method of preventing microplastics from entering rivers and oceans. And so really this is a fantastic opportunity to um, work with others and if you're a budding entrepreneur um, develop your enterprise and problem solving skills to try and uh, uh, tackle global issues. There's also chemistry taste today, summer schools, there's a whole range of other things you can get in, get to get involved in. And the census competition, the team at the bottom right of the screen, um, they went to the final in Eindhoven in August 2019. And this competition is for developing sensor devices. So thinking about the academic facilities that we have, the library is one of the best stocked um, and best um, university library facilities in the country. Um, we have a wide range of massive range of e-journals and e-books that students have access to. There's an iPad and a laptop loan service. Um, I mentioned that we video capture all of our lectures and this is hosted on our virtual learning environment. But we've made a huge range of other developments in online teaching and online facilities. And um, this is something that we're going to be developing for the benefit of all students as well. The advanced hack space is something that um, I mentioned earlier. This is really a network of workshops with its main base at the White City campus. And this has a whole series of places where you can get trained as an undergraduate, staff or whoever to um, use workshops in um, metal and woodworking and textile working. There's a suite of 3D printers. There's an electronics and digital workshop space where you can actually um, do programming and build your own circuit boards. Um, they have a, a bio lab. Um, they have an outreach make space area for community work and a chemistry prep room area too. So this is really a fantastic um, place um, to really sort of prototype something, get involved and get involved in hackathons over the summer. And they also offer modules through Horizons too. We've been putting a lot of investment in. So that's the hack space there. We've been putting a lot of investment in, in chemistry as well in South Kensington, our teaching hub. And in terms of refurbishment, so there's lots of spaces for students to study. Uh, there's a standard revision study spaces and quiet spaces for students for revision purposes. Lots of tutorial rooms, all with uh, AV equipment and with plenty of space, particularly at exam time and assessment time. So a lot of investment for students and a lot of um, focus on student support as well. It's particularly important to us in the department and all students will have a personal tutor. So uh, one of our academic members of staff who is there with the student for the entire degree. And um, this is someone students can ask for advice on optional modules, course changes, if they have any troubles with particular concepts, but also someone they can go to for um, a reference, for instance, for placement applications and job applications later on. We have college tutors as well, year group tutors and the staff student committee which uh, meets on a regular basis, um, staff and student reps to discuss any issues your students might be having, to discuss any suggestions for changes to courses or delivery or structure or different assessments. And this is really, really valued conversation uh, feedback that we use to help uh, modify our courses. And it's this kind of feedback that's fed into the curriculum review process too. Students also, when they come, they get a set of chemistry parents. So this is usually a, a second or third year undergraduates um, as part of our buddy scheme or department family scheme. And so with your chemistry parents, you get to meet them. And it's uh, really fantastic for social activities. They can give you advice about modules. They can give you advice about study um, uh, skills and tips and what to expect in later years as well. 
So support teaching fellows. These are six of us here in the department. We're based at South Kensington, so we're here to support you as well. And personal support and well-being is particularly important to us. So in addition to us based at South Kensington and all the academic staff, we also have a number of other staff available to support you. We have Amelia Barron, who is our student experience officer. Hers is a pastoral role. She's there to help support you in your well-being. And you can go to her at any time and speak to her if you have any, if you need any advice or if you're having any issues. Um, she also brings in her dog, Roxy, an Australian Labradoodle, um, brings her in on a regular basis. Uh, she's a trained therapy dog and students can book a time to come and see Roxy. And she's absolutely lovely. Rob Law is our senior tutor. And so he works with Amelia very closely to support students in their um, in their physical and mental well-being. Mike Bear Park is our disability liaison officer who helps to support students also um, with a variety of diverse learning needs. The college also has a counselling service and our department has its own welfare staff student committee which also meets regular, regularly. Um, staff and welfare student reps um, will meet to discuss any issues students might be having in terms of well-being. The student hub at the college is also a particularly useful place for asking questions about accommodation, finance and other aspects. And the college has a network of mental health first aiders, um, people you can come and talk to if you're in crisis or if you just need to confide in something at a difficult time. We're also very proud of our Athena Swan Gold Award, which was recently renewed. And this is um, recognition of our efforts in promoting gender equality as part within the department and within the sciences um, as part of our wider equality, diversity and inclusivity ethos. And uh, equality and diversity is one of a number of things, actually, alongside research skills, communication skills and um, how to search for information um, that students will learn as part of an I engage module that runs through the first couple of years of their degree. So finally, what does an admissions tutor look for in an application? Well, what do I look for in a personal statement? I, I read hundreds of these each year. So I'd like to see a student discuss their interest in chemistry. Where did it really start for you? What what was the you know, what were the key things that really interested you in chemistry? What books do you read? What magazines do you read? What events have you been to? What university visits? What podcasts do you listen to? What Reddit articles have you read? Uh, you know what what TED talks have you watched? What do you read online? What is it really? What things really engage you in chemistry? Because you can talking about all of these things gives evidence of your passion for the subject. Don't just talk about your interest in chemistry, but talk about applications of chemistry. So think about global issues today. Think about um, how could you use chemistry to try and solve some of these global issues? So watch the news and read about things that interest you. And this really talk about this in your in your personal statement, because this gives evidence of your wider understanding about how chemistry fits within the world. But don't forget your other subjects as well, particularly if you study, if you if you want to study chemistry with another subject, for instance. Talk about your other interests in those subjects, but talk about how they link together. So talk about the links between chemistry and uh, uh, physics or maths or biology or psychology or geography or whatever you are studying. Because that gives evidence of your wider interest and your wider knowledge of of the interdisciplinary nature of all of these topics. And finally, don't forget to talk about your other interests as well. Um, depending on where you apply, this may or may not be looked at in as much detail as other places. So you may have to be quite strategic in what you talk about. But do talk about your other interests, be they in sport, music, volunteering, be it work experience if you have it. But having chemistry work experience is not a prerequisite for most um, institutions. Um, because but most importantly, talk about the skills that you gained from these experiences and what they taught you and what you've learned, because that gives further evidence of you. As an individual, it gives evidence of what benefit those have been to you. And it tells me really something personal about yourself and your development, because ultimately this is a personal statement. So with that, I'd like to thank you all very much indeed for watching. 
Um, please do contact us if you have any questions at the email address on the screen. And thank you all very much. Do please have a look at all the other videos online uh, on this website from staff and students and um, all the best in your studies. Thank you.